Hi, I'm Akram. And I'm Shauna. Welcome to Willie Nelson. Come on in. Welcome to our kitchen. This is a black walnut slab that we picked up. We found on a Facebook Marketplace and we weren't sure we were going to be able to use it, but we were able to cut it perfectly and epoxy it. We used tabletop epoxy to fill the cracks and then we put a layer on top. It was our first time and I think it turned out pretty good. So and this sink was, of course, an Amazon find. It's actually a workstation, so we have a cutting board that fits into half of it perfectly, which gives us more counter space, um, which is nice. Um, we definitely wanted to go deeper than our last tiny home, and it's about 10 inches deep. Um, we love it. We got a little extending faucet here so we can fill our Berkey, which is housed under the sink. We wanted to have a window shelf because I'm a plant lover, even though I have a black thumb. <laughs> and we decided to incorporate the spices here as well, uh, multi-purpose. We were able to find these trim pieces at Home Depot and just stained them functional and cute. For our AC power in here, we wanted something on the kitchen for sure so we could use other small appliances. So we installed a pop-up um, outlet that so just comes out like that and it's super handy, but also folds away so we have more counter space. And then we have our fruit hammock here. I'm a lover of all things macrame and vintage and the cane webbing, obviously, um, so had to have it. It's great for storage up off the counter. The stove top, uh, we wanted to upgrade also from our last build a little bit, um, but we didn't want to break the bank with the more expensive ones, so it's technically an outdoor camping stove, but um, we've got our propane and carbon monoxide monitors in here, and we store the propane tank outside for safety, so we're comfy with it and love it. I made these curtains. They are insulated. They're pocket style with uh, reflectics inside. Um, since we do have a bus with so many windows, it's imperative that we had some sort of insula insulation over the windows. So. Um, we used wool military blankets on the part facing the window for mildew um, and condensation because it won't mildew. And then made it cutesy on the inside. And just roll them up and away. And they are super helpful. These are the kitchen cabinets. Um, as I said, I'm a lover of vintage decor. So we went with the cane webbing we found on the internet and then pallet wood. Um, I have a wonderful friend that allowed us to take all of his pallets from his warehouse and so these just store dishes and coffee and they also store tiny appliances. Here we have the Cubic Mini Cub Stove. Um, we had that in our first build as well and we absolutely love it. Uh, while it does take smaller pieces of wood, it more than heats this bus. Um, so we love the ambiance and everything. Uh, we've got copper uh, coated aluminum sheeting here for heat protection. Uh, we just use sink, sink clips here to hold it in place so there's a little air gap um, for safety. But it's great, tiny, cute, functional. Um, this tile we actually found at Home Depot. I wanted to incorporate a color scheme that matched a vintage piece of fabric that we found. Um, so I searched high and low, but <clears throat> these were the most affordable and I love the colors and the different designs. Here underneath we house our Berkey water filter trash um, and we also have a water heater under here for on demand. It is ventless, so we have no issues with that. And then we, um, we had a food storage problem in our last rig, so we designed this slide out pantry. We've seen it done several times, but... It is super handy uh, for holding all your spices and vitamins and foods and everything um, and keeping it organized. We have little locks here for when we're in drive mode to keep them from flying out. These house um, pans and Tupperwares and um, some utensils, spatulas and things. And then in here we have our inverter 
and more food storage. Housed okay. under the Cubic Mini wood stove is the toilet. It's pretty much my toilet, um, but it's just on 500 pound drawer slides that we pull out. Um, and we love the nature's head. It couldn't be any easier. Here is our dinette. Um, it's for all things eating, playing games, working, anything that we need to do here. This table actually comes off, goes down to become a couch or an additional guest bed. Under here we have our fridge. This is a fridge freezer, the chest style. So we just open this up to access that. And then under here is a secret compartment to house, if I can get it off, hold on, to house our laptops and drone and things. We keep our toaster oven under here as well as dog supplies. We have a little Yorkie, so we keep her pills and medicines and among shopping bags, um, just a bunch of random stuff goes under here, but it's plenty of storage. The upper cabinets house kind of a junk drawer over there, um, towels and bathroom supplies in here, and the back cabinets hold our clothes. So we each get two cabinets for our entire wardrobe. most inspiring part of why we did this was just the constant grind um, making someone else some money with so much stress and so much time spent behind a desk and just wanting the freedom to explore um, we met so many people and talked to so many people that talked about retiring first and working later and the concept was intriguing so we kind of eased into it using it as a vacation mobile at first with our old bus and uh, now we do full time and we love it. I'll say what inspired us is we went to a tiny house festival and uh, we saw two ladies with wonderful buses and we went from going to possibly do van life to bus life and that's one of the reasons why we did bus. Hey guys this is the bed area. Uh, we got a bed online it's like a futon bed it's made from cotton and uh, recycled materials. Uh, it's a queen size bed it fits great it's really comfortable. Um, down here we have two drawers, big drawers that go all the way back into the space. Uh, one for shoes, one for laundry on the bottom. And also down here we house our uh, Chinese diesel heater. And it's vented through here and it's under here as long as, as well as a lot of storage. <clears throat> it's nice to have the Cubic Mini and the diesel heater. Um, let's say you're out on a hike and uh, you get back, you can just turn on the diesel heater and it'll get really hot in here pretty quick. And then you can just throw some wood in the stove and it'll heat up pretty quick as well. It's nice to have the multiple options for the heat. Back here we have an area that Shauna wanted to build. Uh, we found all the railing and the wood at Home Depot. Uh, it's a cute little area to put some tinkers or whatever Shauna wants to put up there. Uh, we installed the speaker system on the front, the back, and a subwoofer as well as a backup camera. It all came together. Uh, really, really makes the trips a little bit more fun. Uh, on the ceiling we used a uh, cedar tongue and groove. Uh, we found that at Home Depot and uh, we insulate it with sheep's wool all throughout on the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. We got the Max Air fan, works great, pulls in and out, uh, can really change the room temperature in here in a minute. Uh, a lot of the material that you see on the cabinets and everywhere, we used uh, pallet wood that I broke down myself. Uh, I was fortunate to have a friend with a warehouse and lots of pallets, so I'll take free wood any day. Especially with wood prices now, uh, pallet wood can really save you a lot on your build. Welcome to the cab area. Uh, up here we got a little storage area for all the things that we're usually going to need while, we, while we're out camping. Um, a nice storage area here. Uh, up here we have another shelf that we built out of some stuff that we found at Home Depot. And then this area is my electrical area. It houses my DC to DC charger, charge controller, breaker boxes, fuses, switches, everything. That's in my entire electrical area. Everything but the inverter. Uh, this area right here is just our little easy access area and it also has our dimmer switch. It's a touch dimmer switch for all the lights. Uh, it works great and it comes with a remote as well. Um, this also is just my knives and a little cute broom and a, my axe that I'm going to need every day. Driving this bus is great. It's a 7.3 liter diesel. It pulls anything. I actually pull a Samurai behind it. It's been great so far. I changed from a 6.0 to a 7.3 on this bus and I'm really loving it so far. I have all the pow power I need and one thing I like about it is up passes. It doesn't really get hot or anything. It's a diesel engine. 
Uh, for me, so far, we're doing really good on this one because it's not that big of a bus, but it has a huge engine. Here's all the switches. This controls our water pumps, diesel heaters, uh, lights all around the LED lights all around the bus, um, all kinds of things. I wanted to put the water pump on a switch so it's not constantly getting power. So coming into this, we already built uh, one bus before this, but before that I was a mechanic for a while and I've done some housing remodeling and commercial construction. Um, we didn't know much about building a bus, we didn't know electrical, but uh, we went to the University of YouTube and learned a lot for that and uh, here we are now on our second build. This build took eight months start to finish, which of course was over our initial expected timeline. Um, I always say to double your timeline and your budget. Um, just in case because you never know how things will turn out and what needs to be redone um, So yeah, eight months start to finish and we just moved in about two weeks ago from our first bus. This is our second build um, The first build took a little longer because it was more part-time, but we have improved upon our skills um, We didn't know much about it to begin with but like I said the internet is a wonderful thing Yeah so. So this bus cost us $3,000 as a base. Um, the seats were removed, so we didn't have to do that. Um, someone had started building it out and then stopped and it just sat for a while. So all in, uh, the budget on this was supposed to be around 20 and we ended up between 30 and 35. But we've added a lot of amenities that we didn't have previous. Yeah. And we've upped our solar bank, battery bank, um, up to our water storage because we knew we were doing this full-time this was going to be our home so we needed more yeah. more hey guys welcome to the outside of the bus one of the first things we did was uh, change this door up what we did is we welded them together on this side and then we cut them in half again that way we could have kind of a doggy door to keep the dog in but still have airflow and it's been great for us so far um, it also has a real door handle on it as well as a deadbolt both of these lock when you lock and it's deadbolt keyed on both sides. The benefits of this is it's deadbolt locked. You can lock it with a key. It's a little bit safer and also nobody can break the window and just turn your lock. Uh, you have to have a key to have it. This table here, I uh, found it in Dallas on the last build and it's a piece of cedar. And then I took my router and routed our name into it. It does come down to a table. Um, it's an addition that I wanted to keep from the other bus and I really love it. Up there is our solar rack and deck. Uh, me and my welder also built that. Uh, he's really good. Um, he did some awesome work. I have 600 watt solar up there as well as a pretty big deck. Um, on the side over there, I also ran the deck on the side so we could easily clean the solar panels. Um, that's something that we couldn't do on the other one, so I wanted it easy access to clean all the solar panels. This is our front bumper. I found it on uh, Facebook Marketplace as well. It did not fit, but my welder helped out again, and we custom made it and bent it out and built a custom plate on it. Um, I also put this LED light up here. Uh, it's important to me to have this because if you hit an elk or a deer, it will take out your radiator or something and then you're kind of, you can't make it home. If it busts your windshield, you can still make it somewhere to be, to get safe. Here is my battery and propane box. Uh, we, this is important to us to have it on the outside. Uh, I don't want to have it open. I have four 100 amp hour AGM batteries as well as a tiny propane tank. Um, I was... I'm pretty picky about how I run my wiring and I try to make it all the same size because that's how you get the most efficient uh, charge out of them. This area is our outdoor shower. It does work with the water heater that's inside so we can come out here and we have a little tent that pops up and we can take a shower. Um, that's our fill port. We can have city uh, water come in or just fill our 46 gallon water tank that we house in the back. Welcome to the back of the bus in the garage area. Uh, back here we have a ladder to get up to our deck. Um, it's been really, I built one on the last one and this one and it's helpful to get up there and clean the solar panels as well. Uh, over here is the garage area. Um, also my 46 gallon, 46 gallon water tank is down here. Um, we house all our backpacking gear, any extra stuff we might need. And we leave the door open when we get to campsites just to be able to lay on the bed and look out the door. We do tow a vehicle. It's a 1987 Suzuki Samurai. I picked it up for a really good deal here in Colorado. 
it's a major advantage when you get to campsites to be able to go in town, do your grocery shopping, laundry, or just go into the parks. Uh, it's been really helpful. We love it so far and it's a big advantage from our last build. We do live in this full time. Uh, some of the pros and cons of that are, uh, I'd say the pros are we can camp wherever we like, be anywhere we like. Um, we've been to some amazing places in this bus and uh, we hope to do more. Some of the cons, I guess. Cons would be having to work a little harder for daily tasks, um, which is kind of enjoyable after a while and you get in a groove, but adjusting to that initially um, just having to make sure that you have enough water and that you drain your gray tank and trash where you put your trash. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a challenge, but those are, we glad, gladly do that um, over just being stationary in our house any day. Um, to have these views and the flexibility of this life and being able to travel and see this beautiful country. There's really no cons. <laughs> <laughs> Getting used to this lifestyle was definitely took a, a bit of a learning curve. Um, I'm not a huge risk taker, so we had to ease into it. I wanted to be financially stable, make sure it was going to work. Um, and once you get in your groove and you kind of learn, there's tons of excellent apps to use to find, you know, things, water, trash, great campsites. Um, internet, all those things. It's, it's amazing the technology that you can rely on now. And once you get that down, the pros far outweigh the cons of this lifestyle in our opinion. Um, we're here to see things and experience things and only get one shot. So here we are. So this is our second build. As we mentioned, our first build is now for sale. So if you are interested in that, please contact us. Uh, we have pictures. We'll be posting an official listing and a short video tour uh, for you to see that. See if you're interested, you can contact us. Our Instagram is at wheelie underscore Nelson for both buses. The name was too good to give up. So Willie Nelson 1 and Willie Nelson 2.0 now. Uh, one of our favorite things about living on the road is the community and the people that we've met. So if you ever see us on the road, please come give us a knock or a honk or a wave or uh, specifically a hug would be great these days. Um, and thanks for coming in and touring our tiny home on wheels. Hey guys, thanks for checking out our house. Uh, is that what else we'll say? Mm -hmm. <laughs>